Hey everybody, welcome to Book Talks with Miss Thomas. Um, I am finally doing the telephone tag. I have watched so many wonderful booktubers do this tag and I've been dying to be tagged, but I didn't tell anyone. And finally, Katie at Paperbacks and Ponytails tagged me. And the book she started with was nine. So if you would like to see um, my 10 books for this tag, Stay tuned. All right, hi everybody and welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, if you are new and you like hearing about books, subscribe. If you are returning, thanks so much for returning and welcome back. I um, am sort of in between worlds. I do secular books and I do um, Christian books, Christian fiction largely, well, all Christian books. And I have started um, a project for my son's school. So I'm really on the hunt for young adult Christian. It doesn't have to be Christian, but at least clean books for young adults. So if you know of any, please put them in the comments, especially for boys. All right, so the telephone tag, let me tell you, this is the coolest tag. When you were little, did you play telephone? I mean, I'm a grown up and I still play telephone. <laughs> we play it sometimes on family vacations. And um, you get together with a group of people and you line up and you whisper in their ear and then they whisper in their ear and then they whisper in the next person's ear. And by the end of the tag, you know, you get some crazy thing that has nothing to do with the beginning. And if you um, don't hear correctly, you can get it repeated if you say operator, but in the, in the telephone tag, that's not the case. So this tag was created by Elizabeth at uh, Reading Riley. I did look that up. So thank you, Elizabeth, for creating this really fun tag. I'm excited to do it. And like I say, I was tagged by Katie at Paperbacks and Ponytails. She is fantastic. She has two channels, actually. She has um, a book channel and she has a Bible journaling channel. So I love Katie. Um, she's just a fantastic person and a fantastic booktuber. She tagged me with um, nine, which I haven't read, but I went to the library and I got it. And I, since I haven't read it, and you don't have to read the book in order to be able to do this tag. The idea is to match the covers. So you're supposed to start with a cover and then try to match it to the next cover somehow. Um, and the idea, you come, you start with this cover and you end with a completely different cover. So nine, um, it is by Rachel Decker. I probably will read it. It sounds pretty good, but I don't know anything about it. So I went to the word nine because I read Nine Perfect Strangers by, and I, you know what? I love this author, but I'm not entirely sure how she pronounces her last name. I think it's Leanne Morarity. And Nine Perfect Strangers, I loved. I loved just about everything Leanne Morarity has ever written. I've read, I think, all of her books. And um, I went with a nine there. But initially, I wasn't sure what the cover has to do with anything. And so um, now I know, having read the book, I think this is supposed to be a flame. And I don't want to spoil anything. But when I first looked at this cover, I thought, what? does it have to do with anything at all? Because the premise of the book is nine people go on like a retreat. It's a healthy retreat where they're supposed to, you know, um, get their lives back together, maybe lose weight. They all have different goals and they, you know, form a group of nine people. And um, it's all about the different characters. And it's very funny. I mean, I think Leanne Moriarty is hilarious. But anyway, um, I didn't know what the cover had to do with anything. And so um, I don't have a copy of this book. I really, let me just tell you, if you like Karen Slaughter, I'm sorry. Um, I don't want to offend anybody. I know she's supposed to be a really great author. I don't care for her books. Um, and I am going to go with one book by Karen Slaughter. I think it was called The Good Daughter um, or The Good Girl. I'll look and I'll, I'll put it on the screen. But the book, here's the book. I'll download a picture and put it. And the reason I put this book is because I have no idea what the cover has to do with the book. Now, I got this book as a gift. 
Um, it was like a secret pal exchange at work. And the teacher who gave it to me, it was funny because after she gave it to me and she invited me to a book club discussion of the book, which I thought was a really fantastic, thoughtful gift. I was, I was so thrilled. And so I did read the book, even though I knew when I got it, I don't care for Karen Slaughter. I read, I think it was called Pretty Girls and I was horrified. I actually put a post-it note on the book and said, this book should not be, you know, promoted as a good book in the library because it's just so disturbing. But um, I will say, so I, I read this book, uh, I think it was called The Good Daughter, and it was nowhere near as graphic as Pretty Girls. So I did read it and I did go to the book discussion. And the one thing I had wanted to gain from the book discussion was, could anyone explain to me what this cover has to do with the book? And, um, you know, I still don't know, but the book was okay. I mean, if you like Karen Slaughter, it was, it was good. It was plot rich, but I don't care for the graphic, um, victimization and the graphic violence in the books. So, um, I, I didn't care for it, but I read it and other people in the group seemed to like it and um, the cover. So my question is this one, I eventually figured out what the cover has to do with the book. If you know what the cover of Karen Slaughter's book has to do with the actual story, go ahead and put it in the comments because I'm not being um, facetious. I really don't know. Like what does this cover have to do with the story? Because I did read the story. Um, now that cover has the flame, right? Just like this one, actually, this is supposed to be a flame. And so this was actually a book recommended to me. I haven't read it yet, but I bought it as soon as, uh, Stacy at Christian Reads and Classics, I think is the name of her channel. I love her channel. Um, she recommended this book, Chris Cross by Cece Wong's. And I couldn't find it at the library, so I bought it. And I like the flame aspect. There's like flame uh, colors in the background, the flame red hair of the girl. This is supposed to be a Christian horror story, which right there got my attention because I'm always looking for engaging Christian books that aren't like flat and predictable um, or even preachy, but something that is Christian that would be really engaging and exciting, especially for a young adult reader. So I haven't read this. I don't know if it will or not, but if Stacy recommended it, I'm betting I'll like it. And um, crisscross with the flame color aspect. There's also a girl on the front cover and she just looks sort of... Um, I don't know if you'd say alienated, but a little bit... Uh, alone-ish, um, sort of sad and alone. And so that takes me to Woman in the Shadow, which is of a woman, <laughs> sort of alienated and alone, maybe. I haven't read this one either, but if you watch my channel, you know that Carrie Stewart Parks has fast become my favorite Christian author. And she's also very engaging. I um, emailed her and told her how much I liked her book and she emailed me right back. And she actually watched some of my videos and subscribed to this channel. So I was just thrilled. And she said that she uh, liked my Truffles videos. Uh, if you don't know, Truffles is my cat. And she does a playlist all on her own, Shorts and Truffles, Book Talks with Truffles. And Carrie Stewart Parks had mentioned Truffles and said that she has a cat in her upcoming book. So I'm really excited to read that. Um, but anyway, Women in the Shadows, I haven't read it yet. Now, Katie did uh, tag me and I coincidentally sent this from Katie's Amazon wish list to her. So I love Carrie Stewart Parks. I want to read this. Maybe Katie will buddy read it with me. Um, but I, I love her books. And so I thought, okay, I have this book. I got it from Thrift Books. But um, I ordered one for Katie too. And I like the idea, the woman on her own. And there's like water. I think that's, well, it's fog and fog is essentially water. It looks like there's mountains, um, but the blue aspect and the, um, I was thinking water when I saw the blue, but also I think Carrie Stewart Parks and Colleen Coble, they kind of go together in my mind. They're both really good thriller Christian authors. And so I was thinking with the blue, um, 
I went with Colleen Coble's Two Reasons to Run, and um, I did read the first book. I got that one from the library, but I bought this one. I had heard of Colleen Coble. I read or listened to one of her audiobooks, and I really enjoyed it. So I saw this on um, Thrift Books as well, Thrift Books, and I didn't realize when I ordered it that it was part two in a three-part um series. And so I went to the library and I just happened to see, uh, what is the first one called? The Colleen Coble book. I'm doing a book giveaway. I actually read the book and I loved it. One Little Lie. And I realized it was like one, one Little Lie, two reasons to run. They probably go together, right? So I read One Little Lie and it was fantastic. And I actually did a book giveaway with that one. And, um, I don't know if I've announced the winner yet or if I'm, if I'm going to announce the winner because I film in advance, but I am serious about that book giveaway. Um, I'll make sure that goes out in the mail. But Two Reasons to Run is um, a woman also uh, probably in danger like this one, but really I was going with the blue. So there's a blue and I think water, it might be fog, which is made of water, I believe. And this one is the ocean, right? There's a beach and um, probably a woman, right? So with the beach theme, it goes with that one, but with the running, you see this, these legs running. I went with The Last Thing I Remember by Andrew, I believe it's Clavin. And I haven't read this yet, so um, I'm looking for uh, Christian books or clean books that would appeal to the teenage boy. And so this one I thought hopefully will because it looks like there's a young boy, a young man maybe, I'm so old. <laughs> Some of you are probably like, he's not young, but to me, he looks young. And um, does he look young to you? I don't know. But so he is running. And that made me think of the Colleen Coble book. So I picked this one. I'm hoping this is a good one for the young, young adult boy. I have such a heart for that as a mom of two boys. And since there's the running, there's also the road here, you know, the, the, the lines from the road. And I got Lee Child, um, Jack Reacher, One Shot. Now, Alice and the Giant Bookshelf, a long time ago, mentioned on her channel that this Jack Reacher character has a TV show on Amazon. So I ordered uh, from the Libby app his very first book in the series. It's called The Killing Floor. And I did listen to that. So I'm going to have a review of that. And I'm going to cover... I'm going to compare the book to the TV show on Amazon, but um, this one, Jack Reacher, I haven't read this one. I, I only know The Killing Floor. I will read it. I bought it again from Thrift Books. I bought it because I was like, oh, Alice recommended that. And I like Alice's taste in books. Um, has the street though. If you can see, there's a street down the middle like the last book. And um, also they seem to be like in very... Uh, urban places, you know, concrete street. This one has a bridge and this one has, uh, I think it's a parking garage. So um, I picked that one, One Shot, the Jack Reacher novel. I don't know where it fits, if they're standalone or if they're like, you know, Janet Ivanovich and you read them in order, I'm not sure. So I haven't decided if I should read this yet. Tell me in the comments, do I need to read anything before or after? I only know The Killing Floor. Um, so this I picked as my next book because of the sort of looming effect of like looking down a street, which leads me to, and this one's a little bit different, um, but it reminded me of a childhood book that I absolutely loved. It was when I was a first young reader and I was getting, you know, beyond dyslexia. Um, I started as a dyslexic. And so I just began reading voraciously after that. And so as a young, younger reader, much younger, um, I went through Lois Duncan's books and Down a Dark Hall was my all time favorite as um, a girl. And I don't know, to me, they're similar because there's that, that sense of looking down um, a sort of looming, scary space. So Down a Dark Hall, which is not a Philippians 4 book. It's got some paranormal and things in there. But as a young girl, I loved this book. And I recommended this book to a middle school student when I taught middle school. And it was a middle school boy. And he came back and said to me, thank you, Miss Thomas. I really liked that book. So um, Down a Dark Hall. Now, 
what did these two have to do with each other? Oh, dark maybe. And the sort of looming, creepy feeling of down a dark hall on the cover leads me to victory over the darkness, which um, down a dark hall does deal with the paranormal and victory over the darkness. Um, the word dark, that's one thing. But um, this one is Christian um, nonfiction. So this one, though, was a game changer for me. When I first read this book, I was a seeker. I was trying to figure out, you know, is there a God? Does he exist? Um, why did he allow my, my first son to survive? Because if you ever heard, um, I think it's in my Hermie video, my first son was born premature and I went through like a spiritual crisis. And then I started really seeking actively, you know, who is God? You know, what 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 is this God? Um, I grew up Catholic. I went to Catholic school, but I wanted to understand, you know, on a more personal, deeper relationship, who God really was. And so I read this book and I remember seeing it in the Christian bookstore and the, the woman that I was with said, oh, you don't want to read that. That's spiritual warfare. And I remember thinking, what is spiritual warfare? I don't even know what that is. So um, I'm not going to get into that. Some people get upset about spiritual warfare. Some people don't. But, um, you know, the idea of good and evil at war in our world and angels and demons and things like that. Um, but I thought it was a really good book. And one thing about the book that I especially liked was uh, on page 38, it tells you who you are in Christ. And these are all verses that support who you are in Christ. So you're God's child, according to John 1, 12. Uh, you're justified, according to Romans 5, 1. Um, you're a citizen in heaven, according to Philippians 3, 20. Um, you are significant, according to Matthew 5, 13 and 14. You are the light of the world. Um, you are in God's temple already. Um, I believe eternal, eternity has already begun. So when I really started to get into who this God is, I started to understand that, you know, it's not just about when you die. It's about the whole eternity. It's already in process. And um, Philippians 4.13, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. And it's just, I love whenever I'm feeling discouraged, I have this page, you know, labeled and I just go right to this page. And um, let's see, I don't see anything from Galatians because some of the uh, booktubers are talking about Galatians this month, but I'll find something in Galatians and do it in another video. But anyway, Down a Dark Hall and Victory Over Darkness, I don't remember where my mind was. I don't know if it's because of the word darkness or because of uh, this idea, should you walk down the hall and this looks like a person in progress going down a sort of journey. And then the last one has nothing to do <laughs> with Christianity. I haven't read this book, so I have no idea. But I was thinking the pretty purple in the cover and the orange and the dark, um, you know, color scheme. I went with The Family Upstairs by Lisa Jewell because of the dark cover and the purple flower. And it looks a little creepy. Um, I don't know anything about this book, but I, I like to read, you know, secular books and Christian books. And I bought this one. It was originally, you can see, $15.00. 30 cents. I bought it at Goodwill for $2.29. So those are my 10 books for my telephone tag. And now is the fun part. Da -da -da -da. I get to tag. <laughs> now, I had a hard time figuring out who to tag. I got on everybody's YouTube channel and tried to figure out who hadn't been tagged yet. And um, so I am going to start with some old friends. Um, I mentioned Alice at Alice and the Giant Bookshelf because of the Jack Reacher thing. So Alice, you're tagged. And when I think of Alice, I have to think of Sandy. I misreads a lot because they're both just such fun ladies. And I don't know, in my mind, they go together. Um, I think they did that Christmas uh, video series where if you like this movie, you'll like that book. I think that's why I connect them in my head. But um, Alice and Sandy, Sandy is at misreads a lot. Berna from Berna's Bookish Adventures. Berna's all the way out in Turkey and she ends her videos with the Turkish word of the day and Berna's just lovely. Um, MJ, I don't think you've done this tag. I looked, I didn't see it. 
if I'm mistaken, I'm sorry. And when I thought of MJ, I thought of the really nice shout out she gave me on in Instagram when I started, um, I started Instagram kind of recently. So my mind went to, went to Instagram, which led me to Lady Jane Books, who has a uh, YouTube channel, but I've really started to notice her on Instagram and she's just adorable. So go check her out. AJ Dunn. I knew who AJ Dunn was. I've heard him mentioned enough in the booktube community, but I'm not real familiar with AJ Dunn. I am sorry though. I did see one video once and he was like, didn't like his local Goodwill. And I thought, okay, well, I love Goodwill. <laughs> <laughs> but I still tag you, AJ, even if you don't like Goodwill. Um, and then Jim at uh, Books, Reading, and Stuff. Now, Jim, I know you are taking a hiatus, a little break, so no worries if you don't. Anyone who doesn't want to do it, please just don't do it. You know, I'm just doing this for fun. I will say I really wanted to be tagged, and this video was a lot harder than I thought. It really required me to do some out-of-the-box thinking. Um, but Jim, if you want, go ahead and do the tag because you are, you know, the king of tags. So I couldn't not tag you. And then Red by Fred is, oh, hey, Red by Fred. Fred, I'm always learning. I have to tag Fred because he's always got coffee and I love me some coffee. Um, Linda is a new subscriber to my channel. So I, I went ahead and tagged Linda at Linda Book Lady. And I believe... That's it. However, if you want to do this tag and I haven't tagged you, please go ahead and do it. Um, there are so many people I'd love to tag that either already did it or I just keep harping on them lately and I don't want to get on their nerves. So, um, or I've tagged them recently. I find myself doing a lot of tags lately. Um, I'm definitely reading a lot too. But anyway, that's it for now. That is my telephone tag. And thank you, thank you, thank you, Katie at Paperbacks and Ponytails for tagging me.